In this lesson, we're going to speak a little bit about organizing your chart of accounts. All right, so I'm going to go ahead up under list and chart of accounts. Of course, you could also do this straight from the home screen right here. Click on chart of accounts. First things first, this chart of accounts does come with account numbers. A lot of people do prefer using account numbers. It's not always necessary. The benefit of it is, is that when you are entering a bill, creating an invoice, whatever it is, you can use these account numbers. So if I wanted to put something to inventory asset, I could push 12100 and it chooses inventory asset, or I can just type in inventory asset. All right, nowadays what I found most of the time, people prefer not to use these account numbers. That's my preference as well. So I'm gonna go under preferences. I'm gonna go up to accounting and my company preferences and uncheck use account numbers. Now when I do that, those account numbers are gonna disappear off this list but they are still sitting in the background. They're just not active components of the chart of accounts anymore, but they're still there. So if I turn it off and go back in and decide later, oh, I really liked that, you can turn them back on. They're still there, okay? For now, I'm going to turn it off. The second part, before I go into it, I'm going to actually run two important reports. I'm gonna run the profit and loss standard and I'm going to set my preferences in here for reports to not refresh for now because I want to take a look at this profit and loss standard and I want to compare it to what it looks like after we're done. The second one that I'm going to build is the balance sheet standard and I'm going to do the same thing. All right. So... Right now, what we're going to do is just talk about organizing the chart of accounts. So right now, you see how you have all of these uh, accounts all the way to the left-hand side. That means that they're header accounts. And underneath them, we have what's called sub-accounts, if they have anything underneath and tabbed in. Those are subs. And what I usually like to do is put everything in a header account and a sub-account, for the most part. There are some exceptions, of course, accounts receivable and accounts payable. Um, although it's possible to do those as well. So how to do this, I just go down, I click on account and new, and it's going to be a bank account. Even though it's really not a bank account, it's kind of just my generic cash account. Okay, so I'm gonna say cash and cash equivalents here and say save and close. I do not wanna have online banking with it because it's not a real bank account. So essentially what I do is I drag this over, drag this over, drag this over. Now they're all subs under cash and cash equivalents. On my chart of accounts here, you notice a big change. First of all, you have the checking account, then you have petty cash and the savings account, and now I have a cash and cash equivalents which shows me a total right here in my chart of accounts. I really like that. All right, then I go down into the other current assets side of things. Inventory, I usually keep separate unless you have several inventory accounts, meaning, you know, packaging inventory, parts inventory, finished goods inventory. Then I'll use kind of the same sim similar format where I would have cash and cash equivalent. So it would say inventory asset and then have all the subs underneath. I do like to have one called prepaid as an other current asset. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and click that there. Things that would go under prepaids, we can have employee advances, prepaid insurance, other prepaid expenses. Retainage receivable, I usually pull up so that it's right under the account receivable. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and move down here into fixed assets, usually same thing. I have one generic fixed asset account. And then I have everything else as a sub under there. It's easy to move, easy to build it this way. Everything gets moved. Okay, this is another asset. Going down to the accounts payable, I do the same thing with credit cards. I have a new credit card, generic. Call it credit cards. I do not want to set it up with 
online banking, drag them under there. Okay, and you can see organizing it. Oh, so that's another credit card. Mm -hmm. Now, most accounts do come with the payroll liabilities split out like this. If you are running payroll through QuickBooks uh, or doing your own payroll, manually calculating it, this is a great way to do it because that allows you to separate out all your payroll liabilities. However, if you are running your payroll through an outside company, it's best just to have one payroll liability account. This will get confusing for you, and it's hard to decipher sometimes on the reports that are given to you weekly what exactly goes where. So most of the time, I'm in there making these accounts inactive if they're using outside payroll. make business owners job a little easier. All right. So again, due to owner payroll liabilities, those aren't really things that could be subs of each other. So they get their own separate account. Here we have our loans. So I would make a new account for long-term loans. All right. Save and close this. All the long-term loans would go underneath there. To the register there. Too many clicking. All the way under, under, under. And the mortgage is a long term loan too. And we have a notes payable. All right. The equity stays pretty standard. Uh, I do like how they, they have this equity set up. One of the things with equity that I usually do as well, uh, if you have multiple business owners, I do like to have, you know, shareholder A. And then as a new account under shareholder A, I'm going to have distributions for the sub of shareholder A. And then I'm also going to have contributions for the sub. And you would have this under each of your shareholders. So contributions, distributions, and accumulated equity. And so what these accounts do, you can learn in uh, the video where we talk about all the different accounts and the accounting behind it. Okay, so I like to have that there so each shareholder we can track individually as well as their net equity up here. Okay, Income, similar. This is already set up so I'm not going to touch it. it. Has income, construction income and all the subs, reimbursement income, all the subs, job expenses, subs, cost of goods sold. Looks like it's very well set up. Now going down into the expense side, this is the area where I usually am doing most of my maintenance. All right, so I usually have a few generic categories in the expense side. If your business does a lot with automobiles, vehicles, I usually have automobiles set aside as its own separate expense here with subs under it. Then I use general and admin expenses, insurance, payroll, rent and occupancy, meals, travel, and entertainment, and sometimes taxes are thrown in there too if you have a great deal of taxes, property, state, things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and create the general and admin expense account. The one thing that is most important when you do these header accounts and sub accounts is you never want to put anything towards the header account. So when you're entering a bill, you never want to put it to general and admin expenses. Because that's not telling us what the, the uh, expense is for. You want to make sure to choose something underneath general and admin that tells us what is the expense. Okay. So I usually don't separate out finance from loan charges, but you're more than welcome to. I'm just going to make these accounts inactive for now. Miscellaneous, again, account I don't really like seeing on my client's chart of accounts. If I can't get them to get rid of it, we'll leave it there. But again, it would be under general and admin, office supplies, all general and admin expenses, postage. We have our insurance already set up here, payroll is already set up, printing and reproduction, general. Sometimes people like having marketing as a separate idea. Again, what the thought is, is that you want to keep your headers as kind of different departments in your business. If you only spend $200 in marketing a year, or if you have only, you know, $300 in, in uh, automobile charges, something that's minimal in your business, you don't want to give it its own category because 
it's not going to change your business if you see how much you spend an automobile separated out like this, fuel insurance. If it's only a couple hundred dollars, you, it's not going to change your business. So you really want to make sure that these headers are different segments of your business. Okay. So as I mentioned, I like doing rent and rent occupancy. So other people like calling this rent and occupancy, rent and utilities. There's a lot of different options there. I'm going to drag this down, pull some rent under there. Usually the repairs are going under there. And utilities, of course, are going under there. Uh, let's see what are we listing. Professional fees is also something. If it's a big enough part of your business, it's great to keep it out separate. Tools and machinery are usually under cost of goods sold, but if you have any for internal probably a small expense there, or under rent and occupancy. Uh, union dues, we're just going to stick under general, uh, or actually we're going to stick under payroll for now. Okay, and that's it for the expenses. All right, so I'm actually going to make these not subs. I like to have just two levels. Okay, so now once I'm done, I'm going to go in here and resort my list. Says am I sure? Puts it back in alphabetical order for me so it looks nice. So the first thing that I want to do is I'm going to pull up my profit and loss report that we had before. Okay? See here, bank charges, insurance, all this stuff is all spread out. If I were to collapse this report, again, bank charges stands out, insurance and interest, postage. We have $104 in postage sitting on our profit and loss. It's not exactly the best information or the best way to organize the information. So now I'm going to go ahead and run a profit and loss now that we've changed it. Okay. So if you look here, scroll down. Now you see that we have headers here, header, header, and subs. And when I collapse this, we have a very neat and tidy profit and loss statement. This is something that you can present to a bank. The bankers, they don't care how much you have in, well, they might care how much you have in bank service charges, but they don't care that you spend $104 on postage. They'd rather see what are their general and admin expenses, what are their payroll expenses. You know, it's the general information that's important for the non-business owner to see. The business owner absolutely needs to look at the details. They need to come in here and see all this information. But when you're presenting it outside, summary is best. It's not up to them to know how much you spend in, uh, you know, insurance versus gas. They, it's, it's, it's no one's business except for you as a business owner. Uh, and that's why I prefer to keep these condensed. Okay. Same thing on the balance sheet. Right now, you have checking and savings. When I collapse this, checking and savings, it's still all there. But when I run the new balance sheet with the changes that we've made, okay, let's say all here and organize it. So if I push collapse now, cash and equivalents, you don't have that detail shown there. It's just saying you don't know how much I have in savings, petty cash, anything. I have $65,000 in the bank. That's all that matters. Same thing moving down here, fixed assets. They don't, you know, it's not important necessarily how much machinery versus uh, how much uh, depreciation you have, I have 433000 in assets. That's what's most important. That's what you want to stand out instead of the clutter of having everything, you know, laid out. Okay. So that is how I like to organize my chart of accounts. And I hope you had a great lesson.